history that we were all taught growing up is wrong. My name is Scott Walter, and I'm a forensic geologist. There's a hidden history in this country that nobody knows about. There are pyramids here, chambers, tombs, inscriptions. They're all over this country. We're gonna investigate these artifacts and sites, and we're gonna get to the truth. Sometimes history isn't what we've been told. Just outside of San Francisco, mysterious rock walls line the hillside. They are known as the East Bay Rock Walls, and they stretch for miles. I received a tip about the cryptic circumstances surrounding them. No one knows how they got here if they were built by man, and if so, why? It's strange we know so little about these walls. As a geologist, I couldn't pass up an opportunity to try and solve this mystery. Recently, I investigated another impressive rock wall down in Texas. After a closer look, that wall ended up being natural. But from what I've seen so far, I don't think that's the case here. Today, the rock walls are split up into different groups and stretch nearly 50 miles across the California foothills. A majority of the walls are two to three stones high, but the more impressive areas are up to eight feet tall. Based on the way the different segments are constructed, I think one group of people built the entire thing. But who were they? And what were these walls for? I can't help but think there's more to this than meets the eye. I tracked down somebody who may have more information. He's a local researcher who spent years trying to crack this geological phenomenon. Have a seat. Well, Olaf, I have to say, this wall is mysterious. I've looked at it, and it runs for as far as the eye can see in both directions. Tell me about the archaeology that's been done here. One of the surprising things is not a lot. There was some work done uh, in the 1980s by an amateur geologist. But beyond that, very, very little has been done. Really? Yeah. No archaeology that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of. Well, that surprises me because, I mean, this is a very large feature. You would think that archaeologists would want to know who built this thing. It's roughly 50 miles in length. And it's funny because most people don't even know it's here. So it doesn't get any kind of attention. It's just up here. If I went down to the local grocery store, would people even know this is here? Probably not. I asked some people I knew that have lived here for a long time. None of them had ever heard of it. That's amazing. So how did you find out about this wall? Well, I, I read a column about things that are, are strange in our area, and I came across the rock wall, and I, uh, I wanted to write about it. Hmm. It's definitely a, a huge mystery. Yeah, absolutely. It, it took somebody a long time to build this. I looked around a little bit and I did a few tests and one of the things I figured out pretty quick is every rock that I tested here, it's all limestone. Well, you know, there's something I want to show you. Got a rock sample here that I collected because I was given special permission uh, by the Park Service. If you take a look at that sample, do you see the weathering rind around the core there? I do. That's limestone and that weathering rind is very thick. It's up to a half inch thick, pretty much all the way around it. Because it goes all the way around, it looks to me that the weathering took place after the wall was built. This is just a rough estimate, but I would say that that weathering rind probably took at least two to 300 years, if not longer. So whoever built this wall, it's been here for a long time. 
that's really important because up until now, we haven't really had an, any idea of how old it is. I mean, we hear stories and legends about this person and that person built it, but we've never had a definitive date on, on its actual age. There is one other thing I'd like to do. I brought a spade with me, and I'd like to dig down at the base of the wall to see if the rocks extend into the ground at all or if they were just built up on the surface. I can't believe a rock wall this big, stretching 50 miles along the California landscape, has never been investigated by modern scientists. I'm curious to know just how far down these rocks go into the ground. How's it looking? Well, this big rock right here goes down about 10 inches and it's still going. This is a big rock and so really there's only a, a, a couple possibilities here. One is this is natural, it's been here the whole time and they built a wall on top of it. The other possibility is they dug a trench here and put the rocks in and then it just naturally filled in from higher elevation over time. Some of these others are uh, definitely going down into the ground at least some distance, so. So the wall may actually be taller. Yeah, well it is taller for sure here. You know, I think we've done all we can do here. Why don't we go check out another part of the wall? Sounds good. Well, Olaf, I know you've thought about this. What are some of the theories about who built this wall? Well, as with many mysteries, there are a lot of theories out there. It really runs the gambit. One theory says Native Americans living in the area are responsible, but the local tribes typically didn't build walls. Another theory says it was built by a group of people called Lemurians who made it to California from the mythical island of Mu. A final, even more explosive theory is that the Chinese built them. You know, there's a, a professor from Berkeley uh, around 1900 who talks about the possibility that this wall was made by the Chinese. Many people don't realize it, but in the 1400s, the Chinese had the largest maritime fleet in the world. Their most famous admiral was Ming Dynasty explorer Zheng He but the Chinese had commanded massive fleets of state-of-the-art ships since the 11th century, trading all around the China Sea. The question is, did they go farther? And could these walls be proof? We know the Chinese began building the Great Wall of China thousands of years ago as physical barriers to protect farmers. If they made landfall in what is now the United States, did they build a similar structure here? What do you think? The idea that it could be the Chinese, you know, that's as good as any other. I mean, right now we have nowhere to start. And they did build walls. The idea of the Chinese coming to America before Columbus is not new. It's been around for hundreds of years. I've received a lot of tips uh, from people who think there is evidence here. I've actually worked on a project where uh, stone boat anchors were found off the coast of Los Angeles that Chinese ships coming over here trading had dropped down and left. And some people think they were here in the 1800s. Some say these things are thousands of years old. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to prove definitively one way or the other because the sea urchins had chewed them up to the point where we just couldn't make that determination. I think starting with the Chinese, I think that's a great place to start. Well, if we can develop some tangible physical evidence that ties the Chinese to this wall, well, that would rewrite a whole new chapter of American history. I'm in California investigating mysterious rock walls just outside of San Francisco. The walls are incredible. They stretch for 50 miles and they're definitely man-made. 
But what I find even more interesting is that they've never been officially examined. Who built them? When? And why? One theory says the Chinese did, long before Columbus discovered the New World. But I still need evidence to prove it. If I could find some sort of artifact connecting the walls with ancient Chinese explorers, that would be the evidence I need to make my case. But first, I want to know who from China could have come here and how they could have made such an epic voyage. So Gunnar, I understand you're the man to talk to about early Chinese exploration of the world. Yes, there were migrations across the ocean. They left artifacts, they left legends, but what, what is really important is the explorers that made maps. And I understand that major historical events are basically categorized by which dynasty they're associated with. Uh, which dynasty is associated with exploration? Well, the most important dynasty would have been in the 15th century, and that would be the Ming Dynasty, and it was referred to as the golden era of Chinese history. The uh, main emperor was Zhu Di, and he picked a navigator by the name of Zheng He to be his admiral to send fleets across the oceans. Admiral Zheng He was the greatest explorer of the Ming Dynasty and went on to become a great diplomat and leader. He's remembered today as a symbol of China's ancient seafaring abilities. Tell me a little bit about those explorations and how big were these fleets? Well, there were seven expeditions in all. The largest fleet at the beginning was about 137 ships and 28,000 men. 28,000? 28,000. And the largest ships, the Bao Chuan, or treasure ships, were approximately 400 to 500 feet long. That's Our, well over well a football over, field. Exactly. There might have been anywhere from 5 to 10 or possibly 30, some scholars say, in a fleet. I mean, this is a major undertaking. We're talking about what time period now? The first expedition was in 1405, okay. and they went to 1433. Where did these voyages go? Well, they started out in uh, Nanjing, which is sort of northeastern China. And they went down the China Sea to Vietnam, Sumatra, then the east coast of India. They went on from the coast of India to Arabia, Somalia, and then down to Kenya. So there was all the way down the African coast. How many miles are we talking here? Uh, I estimate about 11,000 miles. 11,000 miles? Right. Do you think they made it to North America? I know they did because it's on their maps. The first one here is generally called the Shanghai Jing, which means the book of mountains and seas. There are elements within the Shanghai Jing that have a correspondence with real life. So there is a, a good reason to believe that this map was based on that geographical account. So I'm guessing that this circled area here is probably China. Yes. And I suspect that's Africa, that's Europe, then this can only be North and South America, right? Right. Some of the territories on this map also reflect uh, references to geography. Uh, one of those is the Great Luminous Canyon, and some people have said that it referred to the Grand Canyon. Is that mentioned here in the text? On the, the text of this map, it's called here the Bright Chasm Mountains. I recently investigated the legend of a buried treasure in a cave in the Grand Canyon. An early newspaper article attributed the treasure to the Egyptians. But the fact that we're talking about Chinese treasure ships, and there are maps suggesting Chinese explorers were here, definitely has me intrigued. There's a section that says uh, high skies uh, mountains, and that might relate to the high mountains of uh, Alaska, I think. And then in the southern part, there's a section that says depending on heaven mountains, and that could correlate to the Andes. Andes, sure. This is where we get into the situation of a Chinese map being an improvement over an earlier map. You can probably identify some uh, territories on this map. Yes, I can. We got Africa here. We got Europe. We've got India. We've got China. We've got Asia. And this over here can only be North America and South America. In a lot of cases, these ancient maps are like fingerprints. Right. They're the kind of proof that you'd look for at a crime scene that tell you exactly who did the map, what's on it, and when it was done. 
What's the age of this map then? The original was done by uh, navigators that went with Zheng He in about 1435. Clearly it's Chinese and it's got very good representations of North and South America. I mean, this is for Columbus. Exactly. What's going on over here? Well, this is a very important detail. You've got an improvement here that relates partially to the explorations of Marco Polo down the west coast and then to the subsequent explorations of Ming geographers. So what would you identify that as? Well, if this is North America, this can only be the west coast, California? Exactly. Wait a minute, Gunnar. You're saying that Marco Polo, the famous Italian explorer, made it to what is now California? Not only made it to California, he was there spying for the Pope. After looking at impressive man-made walls outside of San Francisco, and a series of maps crafted by the Chinese in the 1400s, I'm thinking there's good reason to believe the Chinese beat Christopher Columbus to America. But a new detail on one of the maps has me wondering about the exploits of an Italian explorer who also shows up on the map, Marco Polo. I just learned his real job might not have been as an explorer, but as a spy. But what's his connection to China? Gunnar, let me get this straight. You're saying that Marco Polo, the famous Italian explorer, was spying for the Pope? The idea that he was uh, an explorer was his cover story. Pope Innocent IV sent his father and uncle to China in order to pick up as much knowledge as they could about Chinese technological weapons. And when his father and uncle got too old to do the field work, they went back to Venice and picked up Marco Polo. So Marco Polo's real job was to go out on these Chinese expeditions across the Pacific Ocean and map the entire coast of North America. And so the maps prove that he served as a spy. Gunner's theories are incredible. He's already shown me two maps that are strong evidence the Chinese beat Columbus to North America. Now he says Marco Polo, the Italian explorer who traveled throughout Asia during the 13th century, made it to the west coast with the Chinese fleets while on a secret mission for the Pope. So do you have one of these maps of North America that we can trace back to Marco Polo? Yes, I do. This map by Abraham Ortelius that dates to about the uh, 1580s and shows the entire west coast along with the Mongolian territories in Asia. So this is the territory of the Grand Khan, the Great Khan, which would have been Kublai Khan, or Marco Polo's boss. So what this map tells us is that there were some geographers that knew that Marco Polo was serving as a diplomat for Kublai Khan and acquiring all of these West Coast territories in North America. Well, how could he claim this land if he didn't know it was there? Precisely. Somebody had to have been there and mapped it. Exactly. So really what this map proves is that there was pre-Columbian exploration all the way down the Western coast of North America. Exactly. That's amazing. It is. I was just in California. I looked at some very interesting stone walls just outside of San Francisco. They stretch for over 50 miles, and nobody knows when they were built. They certainly weren't made recently, and they could very well be hundreds of years old, maybe older than that. When Marco Polo traveled down the West Coast, he got to a region approximately where San Francisco's located. Your map evidence here is not only convincing, but it's conclusive. There's no question in my mind that early Chinese explorers definitely made it to what is now North America. And these walls that I looked at tell me that there could be more evidence over in China. The rock walls I saw in California stumped me at first. Who built them? Why? And more importantly, why don't we know anything about them? But maybe we know more than we think. The maps I looked at don't lie. It seems clear to me the Chinese were aware of North America before Columbus. And since they brought Marco Polo along on their voyages, he also knew about North America, a secret he relayed back to the Pope in Europe who he was spying for. But now I want to know, how do the walls outside of San Francisco compare to the largest wall of all time, the Great Wall of China?
I'm in China looking for something, anything, that connects the rock walls in California with the seafaring Chinese. What I find here could be the missing piece of evidence I need to turn this theory into historical fact. Crystal. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Nice to finally meet you. This is Mr. Dong. Hi, Mr. Dong. Scott this Walter. Is Scott Walter. Welcome right. to the wall. This is spectacular to say the least, one of the seven wonders of the world. I'm standing on a portion of the Great Wall built during the Ming Dynasty, which stretches 5,500 miles. But amazingly, long before that era, other dynasties had built smaller sections of the wall throughout China. So, if you joined all these walls together, they would stretch for more than 12,000 miles. How long would it have taken to build all these walls? When did it start and when did it end? 2,600 years ago, the Chinese started to build the Great Wall. From the very first Chinese dynasty that started the construction through the end of the Ming Dynasty, the total amount of building time spans more than 2,000 years. Well, the obvious question that one has to ask, why did they build such a massive structure? The ancient Chinese had two main trades, hunting and farming. The west and the south of China had natural barriers, but the north had nothing. The hunting civilization needed goods from the farming civilization, and there were two ways they got these items, robbing or trading. In order to avoid conflicts between the two civilizations, the farming civilization decided to build these massive wall barriers. So the wall ensured that people would trade fairly with each other, and it kind of forced them to do things the right way. Exactly. This helped the ancient Chinese avoid conflicts over the centuries. One of the reasons I'm here at the Great Wall is to investigate the question of whether or not ancient Chinese may have come to what is now North America. I'd like to show you a few pictures. These are some of the walls right here. And like here, where the wall goes in the mountaintops, these also go at the top of these mountains in Southern California, and they go for over 50 miles. You can see the construction is different. Here you have stone and mortar construction. This is drywall. These have been stacked. Do you have anything like this here as part of the Great Wall of China? Yes. Actually, we do. Really? So you're saying there are portions of the Great Wall that look like these walls I saw in California? My investigation started in California, where mysterious man-made rock walls line the hillsides outside of San Francisco. There is no historical explanation for why they're here, but I'm determined to find one. Map evidence suggests that the Chinese knew about North America hundreds of years before Columbus, and that famed explorer Marco Polo could have landed here in the 13th century. If that's true, is it possible that the Chinese and Marco Polo are responsible for these walls? At first, I didn't think so. But the wall's unexplained existence, coupled with the map revelations, are too intriguing to ignore. Right now, I've still got more questions than answers. Are there portions of the Great Wall that look like these walls I saw in California? I'm really impressed by the walls in your photo. They don't resemble the Ming Dynasty wall we are standing on right now. But they look very similar to portions of the Great Wall people were building here in China around 200 BC. That's amazing. A lot of the older parts of the wall, recently uncovered in Inner Mongolia in northern China, look like the walls in these photos. If you wouldn't have said these were in California, I would have thought you were showing me photos of the walls in northern China. 
Well, this is really encouraging to hear. Is there anything around here that you could show me? Sure, no problem. I can't believe there are walls in northern China that look so much like the mystery walls in northern California. Hard evidence like that convinces me I'm on the right track. I've gotten special access to see a so-called wild wall that demonstrates how many construction styles were used to build the Great Wall. Unfortunately, it's not exactly like the walls in northern China Mr. Dong told me about. But it's easy to see the Chinese were using different building techniques. Well, this is a lot different than what we saw with all the tourists. This has not been kept up, but it's still just as amazing. It goes up and down the mountains. This area is closer to where people live. It's closed to all tourists in order to maintain and preserve what's left. And what was this structure used for? This part of the wall is referred to as enemy defense. They would store weapons here, as well as soldiers to stand guard and watch for enemies approaching. Like how many people? Typically, these structures would house three to five people, but this one is bigger and would have held 10 to 20 soldiers. During the day, the soldiers monitored the trading between civilizations. But when enemies were spotted, they would pass along signals from one station to another to warn other soldiers. When an army would be invading here, how did they tell the rest of their men that something was going down? One method was with flags. Another method was with fire at night. These methods of warning each other about approaching enemies reaches all the way back to 700 BC. This is fascinating because Native Americans would also use fire, they would use smoke, body gestures to convey messages from mountaintops and hilltops. The reason for this could be that great men think alike. Or another possibility is that there was direct communication between the two continents and the people exchanged ideas. Do you think ancient Chinese navigators made it to what is now the United States? Yes, I think it's very possible. Maybe it was human nature to explore and communicate with different nations. This case continues to grow. First, did Ming Dynasty explorers make it to the west coast of North America in 1433? And if they did, were they actually following in the footsteps of earlier Chinese sailors who brought Marco Polo with them? The evidence is mounting, but I still need more proof, like a journal or a Chinese artifact found on American soil, something that links North America with ancient China once and for all. I'm investigating the theory that ancient explorers from China made it to the west coast of North America before Columbus. Mysterious rock walls in California inspired my research, and ancient maps from the Ming Dynasty and earlier suggest I'm onto something. There are distinct similarities between the California rock walls and ancient parts of the Great Wall of China. I now know Marco Polo, who was spying for the Pope, might have tagged along on a Chinese voyage 150 years before another Chinese voyager supposedly made the trip. Now I need to learn about this explorer, Admiral Zhang He. I'm meeting an admiral from the Chinese Navy at a park that honors this great Ming Dynasty explorer. We know he made seven epic voyages, going as far as Africa, and a growing number of scholars think he made it even farther, to the shores of North America. I've examined map evidence that builds a strong case in proving the Chinese beat Columbus to the New World. All that's missing is physical proof. This is massive. 
This is a replica of a Chinese treasure ship from the Ming Dynasty, when Admiral Zheng He made his seven epic voyages. This ship is 20 Zheng in ancient Chinese measurements, which is 230 feet. How many people could this ship carry? There were around 400 people on each treasure ship. Why did China want to build this replica here? Nanjing was actually the capital of China during the Ming Dynasty. The shipyard was located right here on the Yangtze River, almost exactly where we're standing. This is where Admiral Zheng He built all his treasure ships 600 years ago. What would this ship carry? What was the purpose of this ship? This type of boat always contained treasures, such as silk, that Admiral Zheng He would use to trade or give away as a sign of friendship. How many ships were in a fleet? The fleet would have almost 200 ships of all different sizes. The treasure ship was the flagship, the biggest in the fleet. We're talking about a massive fleet how far could they go? According to ancient Chinese measurement, they sailed more than 100,000 li, which is 50,000 kilometers in modern measurement. 50,000? Yes. If Zheng He went to Africa, why could he not have sailed to the east and gone to North America? We think Admiral Zheng He died at sea during the seventh voyage, so he himself didn't make it to North America. But I think it's very possible his fleets could have made it that far, or even Chinese fleets before his time. Chinese scholars continue to uncover historical evidence, once thought to be lost forever, about the epic voyages of Zheng He. Many think one of the voyages could have made it to North America 60 years before Columbus. Maybe they'll even find evidence from the dynasty before the Ming, the dynasty of Kublai Khan and the Italian explorer and possible spy Marco Polo. I'm absolutely convinced that ancient Chinese definitely made it to America. A ship like this would have no problem making it, but the scholars are gonna say, that's fine, you have an opinion, but where is the hard evidence? And I have to admit, it's a good point. So what I need to find is a tangible artifact that scholars can hold in their hands, something that will convince them that the ancient Chinese made it to America. I am more convinced now than ever that the ancient Chinese had the know-how and the guts to make it to North America. The map evidence is strong, and the fact that the California rock walls match ancient parts of the Great Wall in northern China is undeniable. But what I said to the Admiral is right. I still need a physical piece of evidence to end this argument once and for all. And I think I may know just where to look. A while ago, a fellow researcher contacted me and said there was an artifact I needed to see. It was found here in America, but it seems to be of Chinese origin. It's not widely known to the public, and it's protected under lock and key. The only way to examine this artifact is through its owner, a man named Dr. Lee. Could this small bag contain the huge piece of evidence I've been searching for? My investigation started with mysterious rock walls in California. Some say they prove Ming Dynasty explorers beat Columbus to the New World. And new map evidence says Marco Polo landed on the West Coast even earlier, during the 13th century, traveling with the Chinese, but spying for the Pope. We know the Chinese built walls. The question is, did they build the walls in California? 
At first I thought a link with the Great Wall of China was far-fetched, but I was wrong. There are parts of the Great Wall that do match the rock wall near San Francisco. But I know scholars demand proof in the form of artifacts, and that's what I'm hoping to find here. There is a treasure hunter who uh, found this buried in the ground, four inches down. Wow, and this was how long ago? He found it in 1993, western part of North Carolina, into the foothills of Appalachian. So this was found in North America in the Appalachian Mountains, 250 miles from the ocean. Right. Do I see Chinese characters here? Yes, it says, Great Meng Shen De commissioned or delegated to give. Zhuang Di was the fifth emperor of China during the Ming Dynasty. He ruled from 1425 to 1435 AD, which means he took over right before Admiral Zhang He's seventh and final voyage. This reminds me of a peace medal that were given to the Native Americans to build strategic alliances. It's given out uh, along with a lot of gifts. This is just the card, the Empress card. This was his business card this that he was handing business out. business card, telling everybody that, hey, I'm the new emperor. How do you think this medallion got to that spot? How yeah. did that happen? Well, it's changed hands through different tribes. They probably trade with each other. Okay. Trade was the impetus for all types of exploration. It's what led people like Columbus, Magellan, Marco Polo, and Admiral Zheng He to voyage far beyond their borders. Dr. Li believes that in 1433, Admiral Zheng He, or at least one of his ships, did make it to North America. However, not to the west coast, but the east. It's possible, and this medallion could be a clue, but the provenance of it is a problem. I'm a bit skeptical, until Dr. Li reveals his second piece of evidence, a map made public in 1602 but that was likely made long before. It's always thought to be uh, the work of an Italian Jesuit named Matteo Ricci, who came to China in 1582. OK, so they think that he was the one that made this map. Yes, people always think that he got his information from European maps and translated that into Chinese. But this map is not translated from European maps. It is a map done by the Chinese 60 years before Columbus set sail. Europe is very old. It doesn't have Florence. It doesn't have the Papal States. As a Jesuit, Matteo Ricci could not have left out Florence and the Papal States. Well, no, he wouldn't have left out. If it's just like a yeah. U.S. map today without Washington, D.C. and New York City. Since this map makes no reference to some major European cities, like Florence, it's likely it was created and translated much earlier than the 1500s. Therefore, I believe Dr. Lee makes a good argument that the Chinese discovered North America long before Columbus. And if that's true, what's to say Marco Polo didn't come with them as a spy for the Pope? Look at North America here. What I see with all the rivers, the mountains, I mean, you can tell immediately that that is North America. Exactly. This is gonna take hundreds of years of mapping to get this level of detail. This had to have been long before Columbus to develop a map of this detail. <laughs> I mean, this is incredible. You can actually identify the places today matching the, the names on this map. There's a name here, Apauchen, which is now Appalachian. This name appeared in another Chinese map that predates Ritchie's map. That's amazing. The knowledge of western part of North America has only started with Lewis and Clark in 1804 <laughs> to 1806. Yeah, it's laughable now. So this 200 years before Lewis and Clark, we already have the western part of North America in such detail. To get that level of detail would have taken hundreds of years, and according to established history, Europeans could not have done it. So really, the only other plausible candidates you have are the Chinese. 
because half of the names are not found on European maps mean that the Chinese had to have been to these places, named them before Columbus made any of his four voyages. That's absolutely true. You realize what you're saying? You're blowing the lid off of all the scholars' absolutely. long-held beliefs of the history of America. Did the ancient Chinese come to America? My answer is yes. The question now is when? And was Marco Polo part of that voyage? There are rock walls in California that started me on my quest for the truth and the discovery that they look a lot like parts of the Great Wall of China. There's a medallion that honors an emperor from the Ming Dynasty discovered in North Carolina. There are detailed maps proving an ancient connection to Admiral Zheng He and possibly even to the dynasty before him. Could Chinese explorers have actually stepped foot on North American soil in the 13th century? And was Marco Polo with them, spying for the Pope? Together, these things are all clues to an ancient Chinese connection to America we're just starting to understand. If you have a mysterious artifact or site I need to see, I want to know about it. Go to history.com slash unearthed.